my whole life's always focused around the surf. I'm a surfer and I love surfing, whether it's two foot, 20 foot or 100 foot. The cliches are like thrill seekers and stuff like that, but I don't think I'm really much of a thrill seeker. No one wants to go out and either one, get injured, two, die. No one wants that, do they? So, so this is going to be a kitchen, kitchen, dining room, and then we've got kids' bedrooms here. Through, uh, they're pretty much exactly the same. Currently living at my mother-in-law's. The reason we're here is we're trying to build a house at the minute. She agreed to let us stay for a couple of months. We've been here for a year now. That's our front room. A bit of glass, a bit of sunlight, it's going to be cool. But we've got a lot way to go there. <laughs> we live in a small village and we've always got mates who can help out. Andy came over yesterday and we um, finally got the downpipe in. The outside is slowly looking like a house now. Well, you better, well, so, so measure that again. Or Mate, yeah, just put the uh, best thing to do, right? The house was supposed to be finished in October. I, I was going to work all summer and then move into the house and then my winter could be surfing and it just didn't really happen like that. Cash flow was a problem. A year later, we're still still camping at my mother-in-law's house. They won't mortgage the place until it's finished, but can't can't afford to can't afford to finish it without mortgage. So it's a scenario. I've borrowed all the money I can borrow from friends and family. My summer is it sort of focuses around work and uh, earning money. Last summer, I worked pretty much seven days a week. I was lifeguarding three days a week. I was working, labouring on my house, and also plumbing part-time, trying to get the cash in, really. The well, lifeguard season finishes in September, and then my focus changes completely, like 100% on swells, surf. It's all about surfing. You can't afford to be everywhere and be on every, you know, on every swell. I have my little spots that I know are affordable to go, and I know when to go, because I know the spots well. My main two spots that I go, I suppose, are Ireland and Portugal. I've got an amazing wife, Katie. I've got an amazing little girl called Honey, who's very bright, very beautiful. And we have an amazing little boy called Ace, who's full on and he's disruptive, likes making a mess. And that's waking up very early, and that's playing the drums. <laughs> Not to share a little bit with Ace? No, I learned colour. You don't share with me. I can't I can't Ace! We're a little bit dysfunctional, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, we've got a lot of family around, but, my parents are amazing, Katie's mum's amazing. You got a box stuck in your head, Ace? Uh -uh. A duck. A duck. So we do rely on a lot of other people, you know, to sort of to help my my habits and my my, you know, my last minute decisions to dart off somewhere. Oh, he's snatching, you little rascal. <laughs> rascal. Long term commitments are always tough. For me, it's not like it's, OK, I'm going to enjoy myself, but it's like I'm not just out for a jolly, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm on a mission, so... <laughs> and, and Katie knows that as well. It sounds like it's a lot to fit in, but we've, we manage, we manage really well. Financially, it can be a bit of a gamble, I suppose, but we trust that he's doing the right thing. He's following his dream, following his heart, and things, you know, work out for you if you're being true to yourself in that way. I had a full-time plumbing job about six years ago. I made a decision then, you know, it wasn't for me. That's the career where, like, if I was still working there now, I'd be in a far better position financially, but what does that even mean? I'm doing what I want to do, you know, like, I'm fulfilling my goals and my dreams. I want to surf as much as possible. I want to focus on big waves and big swells. I want to paddle big waves, tow the biggest waves. I want to, I want to be the best at what I do.
Europe has amazing waves and has amazing big waves. You don't have to travel you know, halfway around the world to get big waves. You don't have to surf every big swell. You just have to surf the right swells. February 2nd, Nazare was like the biggest I've seen it. It's like so far from perfect, bumpy, bordering on like unsurfable. You're like, is this worth it? The window was the morning, you know, with the swell peaking and the, the tide was right. You're always nervous out there. Nazare's a scary place. But, you know, getting better and better, keeping it together. It's like, right, let's be sensible, let's be a game plan, we need to know what ways we want, where we want to surf them. So surfing can be, can be so simple sometimes, you know, like, you just put me in, put me in this perfect spot and all I have to do is let go of the rope. Probably the most challenging straight hander I've ever had. It's going so fast and it's so bumpy and it's like so far from perfect. Those sort of waves, like, obviously they're over in seconds, but in your brain there's all slow motion. You know, I felt like I was in control all the way down, which is pretty hard when you hammer it at like 40 miles an hour. But if you fall in one of those ways, you get lost. It's just you against, you know, how many ways can you survive on your head? The new was like, I'm gonna get completely mowed here. And I was going down, 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 and then I had the crashing behind me and again it felt like a minute before it hit me but it was probably and the second it hit me I didn't even hesitate I just pulled so obviously I was getting ragdolled like left right and centre up and down and I didn't even want to see how far or how long I was going to get taken for One over and see Julian and Woolacombe. He's been chafing my boards. It's another thing that I've been meaning to do for, for absolutely ages. He made me the tow board that I've been riding like this winter and last winter, and I've had some of my best waves on that. So I saw a board, which is a South African board, and I just took a few pictures of it. Yeah. And then, um, and then Julian had already shaped me a couple of boards prior to that, like tow boards, and um, we just sort of talked about it and worked it out. And, um, and this is my second one from that. But it seems to go go, go good in straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> Foolishly, that's my only board. So yeah, he's going to replicate it for me and then also he's going to make me another one, tweak it a little bit. So like, maybe hopefully move the design on a little bit. This board is almost not like a surfboard. It's almost a combination of kiteboard, wakeboard, snowboard. Yeah. snowboard. Do you know what I mean? It's definite, isn't it? You know, it's it's, way not, it's you... not surfboard, is it? No. We want a go-to board, so if this one gets lost, at least we, we know we've got a replacement for it. Yeah, yeah. And then we work on something else separately. And then, actually, we're going to get this one on my computer, so essentially, you know, this should never get lost forever, then that one. And then actually develop a separate board that, you know, for, for, to see where that one goes. But we know this is a banker, really, basically, so we don't want to lose it. I feel like, you know, for this one at the minute, I've got it on a perfect, like, no matter what size it is, I know what, what, what weight to put on it, you know. I rode it all last year and I've had a good year and this year and it, like again like, I've had to be in some pretty heavy situations with it at Nazare and somehow I've just never lost it and like we've lost quite a few boards down there like they just disappear you know and, and this I've, for some reason I've always always found it you know like so so yeah it is my lucky board. I don't want to survive big waves I want to surf big waves you know I want to surf them as well as I can. I don't think you can let like where you live or financial situations stop you from doing that. If you want to do something, you just, you've got to make it happen. My focus is always on the next 
to ride the next big wave, not my last big wave. I don't know, the normal life? I don't know, what is normal? I love a pretty normal life. Maybe a little bit strange, <laughs> but I like that.